Welcome everyone to part three of our C2019 solutions. Question 31. What is the area of the shaded figure below? In this figure, the length of the line was given. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven squares. Okay, so the area of so 11 squares will give us an area of 11 by 4 which will give us 44 centimeters squared and then we have a total of 1 2 3 4 5 6 triangles and as we can see these triangles are half the area of the square so we can now I'll also show you another method all right six triangles so the area of these triangles are going to be six by two which is half the area of the square which is going to give me 12 centimeters squared when I add this I'm going to get a total of 56 centimeters squared to be the area of the shaded region all right now let me just see for some persons who may not see um, half of the square as triangles what we can do we can say okay these two triangles will make one square these two triangles will make another square these two triangles will make another square so what do I have here I have three squares all right so it's going to be three by four which will also give me 12 so whether I see them as six triangles or three squares I'm still going to get 12 centimeters squared all right and when I add 44 and 12 I'm going to get 56 or someone may say well miss you have a total of 11 plus 12 13 14 so all I can do is multiply 14 by 4 and that's going to give me 56 centimeters squared okay so either or you're still getting the same answer 56 centimeters squared question 32 the diagram below shows a tree a kite and a ladder the question is asking us by how much should the ladder be extended to reach the kite at the top of the tree they're basically asking us to find the difference from here to here they're asking us to find the difference they're asking us to subtract we have the height of the tree which is three meters and we have the ladder which is two meters and 35 centimeters so all we're going to do is subtract I'm going to write zeros to fill in this area zero take away five cannot so I need to borrow from the three I'm going to get 10 here borrow from the 10 I'm going to get 9 and 10 here 10 take away 5 is going to give me 5 9 take away 3 is going to give me 6 2 take away 2 is going to give me 0 so here I have a total of 65 centimeters this side was meter and this side 70 meters so it's a difference of 65 centimeters we write it as our answer here 65 centimeters mr. Deo wants to tile the floor below using square tiles 20 centimeters in length how many tiles will he need to cover the floor now before we figure out how many tiles are needed to cover this floor the first thing we have to do is find the area of the floor good now to find the area of the floor one student may say okay miss I can see this is a compound shape and I would like to separate my shape like this okay no problem let's label this first shape a let's label this second shape B what's the area of the first shape as we can see shape a is a square the length of this side is 8 the length of the side from here to here 
is also eight. Here is eight, here is eight. Four here is half, four and here is four. This is a square, so the area of shape A is going to be, how do I find the area of a square? Side by side, so it's going to be eight by eight, which is going to give me 64 meters. And then shape B is a rectangle. How do I find the area of a rectangle? It's going to be length by breadth or length by width, which is going to be two by four. And that's going to give me eight meters. And when I add this, I'm getting a total of 72 meters squared. Now, another student may say, Miss, I would not have separated my shape like this. I would actually separate my shape like this. Now you'll get the same answer. So I would separate my shape like this. No problem at all. We are still going to label this shape A and this shape B. Let's find the area of shape A. We have two rectangles now. So we would have to multiply 8 by 4. So 8 by 4, I'm labeling this shape A, so shape A to find the area of shape A is going to be 8 by 4, which is going to give me 32 meters squared. And shape B, another rectangle, is going to be 10, the length of this entire line is 10 by 4, and that's going to give me 40. And now I add 40 meters. Now I add 2 plus 0 is 2 and 3 plus 4 is 72. So notice what we are getting. We are getting the same thing, 72 meters squared. So if you chose to do the first one, you're getting the same area. If you chose to do the second one, you are getting the same area. Good. Now that we know the area of the shape, now we can figure out how many tiles are needed to cover this area. To figure out how many tiles are needed to cover this area, we are going to divide, I'm writing A short for area, area of floor over area, let me write it out, area of tile. Good. So what is the area of the floor? We just work it out. It is 72 meters squared. And what we need to do, we need to convert here. We need to convert 72 meters squared to 72 squared meters. Now the conversion here is 72 by 10,000 Over what is the area of the tiles? The area of the tiles is 22, is 20, sorry, multiply by 20. Good, so now that we have everything converted into square meters, now we can simplify this. How can I simplify this? 72 multiplied by 10,000 is going to give me how much? 700. 20,000 when I'm multiplying a number by 10 or 100 or by a thousand or 10,000 What do I do? I usually move the decimal points. Let me demonstrate that on this side I am multiplying by 10,000 so I'll need to move the decimal point four times The decimal point of a whole number is understood to be after the number So I'm going to move the decimal point four times notice. I'm adding a zero before I move one two three four so our new number is seven hundred and twenty thousand all over 20 by 20 20 by 20 is 400 and if you don't know that go to your working column and work it out now let's simplify this zero can cancel off this zero this zero can cancel off this zero what am i left with 7,000, 7,700 over 4. Now the best thing to do is go to your working column and do it long division style. So we'll say 4 into, let's write 7, 2, 0, 0. 
7,200. 4 into 7 is 1. 4 ones are 4, and now we subtract. 7 take away 4 is 3. Next step, bring down the, the 2. 4 into 32 is 8. 4 eights are 32. 2 take away 2 is 0. 3 take away 3 is 0. Next step is to bring down this. 0. 4 into 0 is 0. 4 by 0 it's 0. Next step, bring down the next 0. 4 into 0 is 0. And 4 by 0 is 0. So we are getting 1800. So that means it will take a total of 1800 tiles to cover the floor. Now I know this question might have been a bit heavy, but if you need to pause this question or listen to this question again, or we'll probably come back to this question two days after listen to, listening to it, then do that. The drawing below is a square yard of side five meters. The yard is paved except for two rectangular patches of grass. The two patches of grass are identical. So in order for us to find, the question wants us to find the area of the yard, the paved area of the yard. So what we need to do is to find the area of the entire yard as well as the area of the two grass patches, subtract it and that will tell us the area of the paved yard. Now let's get to that. The area of the square yard is going to be 5 by 5, side by side, the area of a square, yes? 5 by 5 is going to give us 25 meters squared. This is the area of the entire yard. Now we need to find the area of the two grass patches. Now in finding the area of the two grass patches, we need to realize something. We have a space. This entire length is from here, watch my red line, to here, is four. And notice we have no grass in this space, so we need to subtract this space. So we're actually going to subtract four meters, 0 0.5 meters from four meters. So let's do that. We have four and we want to take away 0 0.5, taking you back to sub adding, subtracting decimals. You must line it up properly. We are going to put a zero here. It is 4.0. Zero take away five. Cannot, so we need to borrow from the four. 10 take away five is going to give us 5.3. Take away zero is going to give us three. Good, so we subtracted the space. So the new length of this line, this grass area is three. 5. And the length of this side is 2.5. Remember, we need to see it as it's, it is identical. Okay, so we need to see it as one big rectangle. Because remember, we already subtracted the space that is in here. How do we find the area of a rectangle? Length by breadth or length by width? Whichever one you rather. So we have to multiply 3.5 by 2.5. So let's do that. We have 3.5. Oh, I already have it on this side, so I'm going to write it here. Multiply by 2.5. Now, when we are multiplying decimals, it is easier to count the number of decimal spaces, take note of it, and write the sums, write over the sum with all the decimal points. So let's check and see how many decimal spaces we have here. We have 1, 2. So we have a total of two decimal places here. So now what we are going to do is write over 3.5 and 2.5 to be this. We're going to write it over. It's going to be 35 multiplied by 25. Isn't it easier to look at and work out? We put our zero here. Two fives are 10. Three twos are six and one is seven. Five by five is 25. 5 3s are 15, 16, 17. So we are getting 875. And remember, we have our two decimal places here. So we need to move our decimal point two times. 1, 2. So we are actually getting this area to be 8.75. 
So this entire area, these two patches of grass, the area is 8.75. So now, if we want to find the area of the paved, the paved area, that is, we need to subtract the total area and the grass area. So let's see, we have 25. We're going to take away the 8.75. Notice how I'm lining this up. 8. 0.75 so we are going to subtract and we are going to put zeros into these spaces and let's begin could zero take away five no so I am borrowing 10 take away five is five nine take away seven is going to give me two put back my point could 4 take away 8? No, I need to take 1. 14 take away 8 is going to give me 6. And 1 take away 0 is 1. So the area of the paved area of this yard, the area is 16.25 meters squared. And that is our answer. Question 35. Complete the shape using x y as the line of symmetry this is very easy all we need to do is check i am going four times to the left so here i will come four times to the right and then i'm going in on the fifth coming down like this see i'm just patterning what they're doing come down for two then i'm going to go in for two i'm going to go out for two oh my lines are not as straight as yours and i'm going to come straight in so there you have it. The shape is completed. 36. The two boys have kites in the shapes of quadrilaterals. What are quadrilaterals? Four-sided shapes. Write two differences in the properties of kite A and the kite B. What do we notice here? What is shape A? Shape A is a trapezium and shape B is a rectangle. What are some differences we are seeing here? Now we have one pair of parallel line with this trapezium and in this rectangle we actually have two pairs of parallel lines. That's a difference there. If you didn't see that, another difference is that we have four equal right angles in a rectangle. Four right angles. And in this trapezium, we have no rectangles. Michael and Joey played a game where they both turned in a clockwise direction. They started the game with each boy facing north and they both turned together. Michael made half turns. So Michael is making half turns and Joey is making quarter turns. I'm writing this here to remind us. So let's draw that. Let's draw cardinal points. We have north, south, east, and west. So they, to start this game off, they're both facing north. Now let's do it, Michael. Michael is making a half turn, so he's going to go from north straight to south. They already give us that. Joey is making quarter turns, so he's going to go from north to east. So East is missing here. Let's continue the game. Michael, who is South, will make a half turn again and he would now be facing North. Joey, who is making quarter turns, will go from here, from East to South. And South was given here. Now, Michael again, he is facing North, so he goes from North to South again. That was given. Where is Joey? Joey is facing south. So Joey will now have to go to west. So west is missing here. And if they continue the game, they, Joey, Michael will go to north. And finally, Joey will get to north as well. Question 38. The table below shows the scores of some standard four students in a mathematics test. This is the score number of students what percentage of the students had a score of at least 15 
what percentage of students had a score of at least 15. All these students here had at least 15. So we need to add that first. We have to add 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4. And this is going to give us a total of 28. So at least 28 students scored 15. Now they want us to calculate, this is the number of students, but they want the percent. So we need to put the number of students over the total number of students. So the total number of students we have here, we can get the total by adding 28 and 5 and 7. So the total number of students we have is 40. So to find the percent, we are going to put the number of students who scored at least 15 over the total number of students. Again, we're getting the total number of students by adding all the students. And to get a percent, we need to multiply by 100. And let's simplify this. This zero could cancel this zero. Four into four, one. Four can go into 28 seven times. And then we have 7 by 10 is going to give us 70. So our answer is 70%. Question 39. The bar graph below shows the number of raffle tickets sold by five boys. So let's check that out. So here we have Ian, Ray, Terry, Eden, Zach. The total number of tickets to be sold is 200. Now that's a lot. Which boy or boys should be given more tickets to sell? And give a reason for your answer, right? Some may say, hmm, let's give Ray and Eden because they sold the least and they can sell more, okay? And you give the reason for your answer. Others may say, well, Terry sold how much? Approximately 55 and Zap sold 40 they are excellent salesmen so why not give the rest of them so that everything can sell out fast whatever your choice is be sure to give a reason for your answer Arnold's mean mark in a test in four tests is 73 he wants to increase his mean by five marks how many marks must he score in the fifth test the question to ask yourself here is, what do you do when you're calculating mean? How do you calculate mean? When you're calculating mean, we usually put the total score over the number of scores. In this case, in this first case, four tests he did. And that is going to give us our mean. So when we write it like this, we are able to see what is missing. Good. So the total, the scores are four tests. So let me write that. The scores are four tests. They did not tell us the score of four tests, but I'm going to write it like this for you to see the picture. All right. So one test plus another test plus another test plus another test over four would have given him a mean of 73. So, what would be the score here? To figure that out, we would have to multiply 73 by 4. 4 threes are 12. 4 sevens are 28 and 1 is 29. So, it means that the total of these four scores would be 292. Here what it says. He wants to increase his mean by 5. So he don't want his mean to be 73, but rather 78, because he wants to increase his mean by five. So 73 plus five is going to be 78. He wants his mean to be 78. How many marks must he score? So in this case, he cannot score 292, he must score more. So how much should he score? We're going to put his score over 5, it's equal to for him to get 78. How much must he score? Just how we found the score he made on this side, 
the same thing we have to do here in this case we would have to multiply 78 by 5 5 eighths are 40 5 sevens are 35 and 4 is 39 so it means that his score must be 390 in order for him to score 78. So the score is and the answer is 390. Omari bought some magnets and spinners. Each magnet cost $2 and each spinner cost $4. He bought seven more magnets than spinners and spent a total of $104. How many magnets did he buy? Now, right away, we can tell that the cost of one spinner, which is $4, is twice the cost of one magnet, which is $2. Using the information that was given, the first thing we would do is find out how much these seven magnets cost and subtract it from the total cost so we have seven magnets and each magnet costs two dollars so seven twos are 14 so we need to subtract this 14 from the total cost the total cost is 104 dollars 104 dollars take away 14 dollars is going to give us a total of 90 now we have $90 remaining and out of this $90 we need to find out how many magnets were bought and how many spinners were bought. Now this $90 as I said before the spinners cost twice as much as a magnet. So if we split this $90 into three parts, 90 over 3. How much times could 3 go into 90? 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 9, 3. And 3 into 0 is 0. So if I split this 90 into 3 parts, I'm going to get 30. And as I said before, the spinners cost how much? Twice as much. Okay? So that means the cost of the spinners is going to be $60 and the cost of the magnets is going to be $30. Now the question is, how many spinners could he get from $60? All we need to do is divide 60 by 4 and that will tell us how many spinners he would get. He would get a total, we're dividing $60 by 4, of 15 spinners. Okay, now how many magnets would he get? From this $30, we need to divide this $30 by the cost of one magnet, which is 2 and he would get a total of 15 magnets as well. However, they told us that he bought seven more magnets. So the total magnets he bought would be 15 plus seven, which will give us 22. So he bought a total of 22 magnets. 42, a family of four persons bought lunch from the menu. Four persons, they bought lunch from this menu. The total bill was $125. Each person's meal included a fruit punch. How many burgers and salads were bought? So if each person had a fruit punch, so four persons, right? Let's write person one, person two, person three, person four. So if each person bought a fruit punch it will be eight 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 four eights this is going to be thirty two dollars how much more money is going to be remain out of this 25 I'm going to subtract we're using the information we are using the information that they gave us 125 take away 32 5 take away 2 is 3 we need to take one from this one 12 take away 3 is going to give us 9 so we have 93 dollars remaining so let's see what we can get from this out of this meal everybody bought a fruit punch let's see how much burgers we can get here one two three if three persons bought a burger 
how much for one burger 24 24 24 24 by 3 is going to give us how much let's see how much money we are working with 3 4 is a 12 3 2 is a 6 and 1 is 7 that's 72 so we can get 93 let's see how much money we have left take away 72 this is going to give me 17921 wow so notice three persons alone can get a burger and one person that health conscious person is going to get a salad and that's the end of our money there let's see so 24 by 3 is 72 72 plus 21 is going to give me how much three seven eight nine ninety three so if I add the drinks and the meal that they all had I am going to get back my total of a hundred and twenty five dollars so how many burgers and salads were bought so there were three burgers yes three burgers and one salad was bought identical rectangular cards are placed on a straight line at an equal distance from each other equal distance from each other as shown below the total distance from the first card to the third card as we can see here from the first to the third is 17 centimeters each card has a width of three centimeters so if here is three here is three and here is three what is the space so what we can do is add three plus three plus three that's nine and we can subtract nine from 17 once we do that we are going to get eight so which means that the space here is four what do they want us to find what is the total distance from the third card to the 12th card so what we can do the easiest thing to do is only from the third to the twelfth. So why not draw the cards? Third, fourth, let's say this is the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Now remember, in all of this, we know the width of each one. Let me use another color. We know the width of each card is three and we also know that the space is, is four so the easiest thing to do is to check how much rectangles we have here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine so i can multiply nine by the width which is three and that's going to give me 27 and how many spaces do I have? And we know the width of each space is four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight spaces. So I'm going to multiply eight by four. Let's check our spaces again. Oh no. We actually have nine spaces. Remember, it's from the third, third to the twelfth. So we must calculate this space here. So we actually have a total of nine spaces, and nine by four is going to give us thirty-six. And all we need to do is add twenty-seven and thirty-six to find out the total distance, and that's going to give us sixty-three. So the answer is. 63 7 plus 6 is going to give us 13 2 plus 3 is 5 and 1 is 6 44 cubes are used to make a pattern to build staircases as shown below so how many cubes are used for the first step so I'm going to write my steps here one step two step three steps four steps all right they want us to get to six steps five steps six steps how many cubes are used for one step three how many cubes are used to make two steps nine 
How many cubes are used to make three steps? 18. How many cubes are used to make four steps? 30. What's the pattern here? So to go from three to nine, what we did, they add, we add six, nine, then we're gonna add three more each time, okay? To get 18, we add nine. To get eight, to get 30, what did we do? We add nine plus three, which is 12. What do you, how much do you think we have to add to 30 to, to know how much we need for the fifth stairs? We need to add 3 to 12, and that will be 15. So, the amount of cubes, or the number of cubes, for the fifth steps here, for 5 steps, is going to be 45 cubes. Now we need to find out how many cubes are we going to use for six steps. Well, how much do you think we need to add to 40? How much do you think we need to add to 15? We need to add 3 to 15 again. So we're going to be adding 45 plus 18. This is going to give us a total of 63 cubes. So we're going to use 63 cubes for the sixth step. Part B of this question says, if 135 cubes are used to build a similar staircase, how many steps will the staircase have? Now we need to continue this pattern because for the sixth stairs, how many cubes did we get? We used 63. So for seven steps, not for the six, but six steps, for the seven, um, for seven steps, right for seven steps how many cubes are we going to use so the last number we added was 18 so 18 plus 3 is going to be 21 so we're going to add 21 to 63 when we add 21 to 63 we are going to get 84 now we need to add 3 again to 21 and that's going to give us 24 so if we add 24 to 84 we are going to get 108 and that is going to be for eight steps now if i how much am i going to add to 108 i'm going to add 27 and this is going to give me 135 for nine steps and there you have it that's our answer so if 135 cubes are used how many steps will the staircase have it will have nine steps Maya has 285 stickers, Renee has 350 stickers, and Zara has 175 stickers. How many stickers must Renee and Maya give to Zara so that the three girls will have the same number of stickers? Okay, so what we need to do is add all the stickers. So we have 285 plus 350 plus 175 once you know the total number of stickers then we can divide the stickers by 3 so let's add 5 plus 5 is 10 8 plus 5 plus 7 plus the 1 outside is 21 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So we're getting 810 is the total number of stickers. Now, what we need to do is divide 810 by 3. 3 into 8 is 2, 3 twos are 6, 8 take away 6 is 2. Bring down this one. 3 into 21 is 7, 3 sevens are 21, subtract, bring down the 0, 3 into 0 is 0, 3 by 0 is 0, yeah, 0.
so 3 can go into 810 270 times now we know how much stickers each girl must have so that it will be so that they will all have the same number we can subtract so Maya has 285 so let's do it Maya first Maya has 285 so it's going to be 285 subtract 270 this will tell us how much Maya needs to give Zara all right five take away zero is five eight take away seven is one two take away two is zero so Maya have to give a total of 15 stickers let's check how much Renny needs to give now Renny has 350 350 take away 270 zero take away zero is zero five cannot take away seven so I need to take one from the three we have 15 take away seven and that's gonna give me eight two take away two is zero so Renny have to give her a total of 80 stickers right so Maya have to give 15 and Renny have to give 80 thanks for watching be sure to like share and subscribe you know sharing this lesson or these solutions can truly help someone so be sure to share